Hello everyone, can you hear me? We're back, I'm back. Let's wait a bit, I hope that I don't heal myself twice again. Okay, yeah, sounds good. This time I made sure. Let me know if you can hear me or not hear me. Um, I saw that some of you are already there, that's nice. I had a Wi-Fi connection problem last Saturday, unfortunately, so the stream just died. All right, I'm getting some messages. We're on. That's so nice. All right. Wow. Some new names. Maybe the time. Usually we stream on Saturday at 12, 12 a, no, 12 p.m., um, but this is, I guess, the first NGD stream in the evening. So I guess some of you are not there, but some of some other people are there, which is nice. Maybe some people that don't even know about the NGD. The NGD is the Nordic Go Dojo and it is an online Go school, which um, is mainly led by Antti Tormenen. And um, yeah, I'm a teacher there and we do a Go stream every two weeks. So this is one of them. I'm Matthias. And um, yeah, it's nice that you're tuning in. So I was saying that I had a Wi-Fi problem. There was some storm here. Somehow the Wi-Fi died. It was very sad. And I already had a 20 minute stream. So um, yeah, I talked a lot about the topic already, but I told myself that I will try to genuinely say the things again, even though it is hard, I guess. Imagine you tell somebody's story and then you have to say the same story like another friend just one day afterwards, but I will do it because it is important that we talk about the topic. Um, so yeah, the topic is what? The topic is judgment is above reading. And this is a sentence that I have heard from my teacher Jeff many times and I have tried to understand it many times and my understanding of it changed a lot during the years I guess um, and it really helped me improve and go and it really still helps me to remind myself this before a game or during a game so um, let's yeah I will try to tell you my understanding of the of this sentence so judgment I, I will try to tell you some definition I define judgment as evaluating the outcome of a position locally and the whole board. So there are many types of judgment. This is a little bit abstract, this definition. Basically, it answers the question, is this outcome good? Is it good? Also, including maybe Sente and Goethe, think, think about that. Like, is it good considering that I got Goethe or is it good considering I got Santa and I can play the biggest move somewhere else? Um, but then you can also look at it only locally. You can look at it at many judgment perspectives. But for now, let's just say it answers the question, is an outcome good? And then reading. What is reading? It is basically just predicting the local outcome of a fight position. Um, or, I mean, you could also say it can be local, it can be global, but for now, let's stick to the local, local stuff. Um, and it basically answers the question many times of, does it work? Does this cut work? Uh, can I capture these two stones? Can I kill the group? Um, all kinds of stuff. Does the idea that I put myself in the head that I want to achieve work? Um, so yeah, but when we think about does it work, we also need to think about is it good? So that's the, that's the thing. Many people just start reading and start reading some positions, start reading some, um, yeah, some outcome and they're so happy that they can manage to kill two stones or, or three stones or whatever, but they don't think about the next question and we have to ask that question, is it good? which is basically judgment. So I have a question for you. I also asked this question um, on Saturday. Let's see, maybe this time what will come out, what's your opinion? 
So imagine a game between somebody really good at reading and somebody really good at judging. Who do you think will win? The better judger or the better reader? So, I mean, also you can think about your last games. Somebody won those games, I hope, I don't know. Recently I saw a really amazing Jigo between two pros, a four-way co, so maybe you were one of those. But you can still think about why did they win the game or did you win the game? Did you read better or did you judge better or maybe something else? But I think you can more or less, yeah, you can ease it down to those two factors if you want to. So Jay Tengen says, better reader. Trevok says, it depends. What does it depend on? Seems like the best reader will include the best judgment. All right, so somebody already combining the two. And the best judgment will always include the best reading. If judgment is above reading, I would say the better judging. Uh, the, the better judging is more conducive to wins. Yeah, this is the thing. The reading is important to make sure the groups don't die. So there's a baseline of reading required either way. Yeah, that's true. So I also thought about this question a lot. And I think it also really depends as always in life. Um, why is life so boring? It always depends. Um, but I would say it depends a lot on the type of game. And um, on Saturday, Antti said something, I don't remember the, the quote, but it was something like, the wise person knows what position to get into or something, something like that. I'm re-quoting it super wrong, but it was something like this. It is really important what kind of position you put yourself into. So if it is a pure fighting game where a lot of reading is involved, most of the times the better reader will win. But you can also try to put yourself in the position where judgment is more important, maybe in a more boring game with less fights or maybe in a game with some co. Co always requires a huge amount of reading, uh, not reading, judging. Um, like you have to evaluate, does this co thread, if I ignore it, is it worth it? How much can I get out of the co itself? Like co is basically pure judgment almost. So imagine a game where a co is really important then the better judger, I think, has a good chance to, to get a good result out of that. But then also many short games that end by resignation or end by blunders are mostly won by the better reader. Um, that's just the fact. So I would also say the higher in level you get, the more important judgment is for the, for the outcome of the game because it is possible that you're the better judger but then in the end, by that, you can maybe gain an advantage of five points in the opening. But if you're the better reader and you just kill a group, then you have a lead of 20 points. So, or maybe even more. So this is the thing here. Um, as somebody already says, reading is, weak, requi re oh. reading is required for weak groups not to die. So we already have to combine those two. Um, the nice thing about judgment is that you can skip a lot of unnecessary reading by judging first. So imagine a position where you think about, well, we will get to examples later, don't worry. Um, I'm holding a little monologue in the beginning um, to get the idea straight. But there are many positions where you start reading a lot, but then after all you realize, hmm, maybe if I would have played the simple move, I didn't have to do all this reading like um, and the position by playing the simple move is already good and maybe by reading you lose time and you 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 overthink many times we overthink positions because we want to try to play a cool move or do do something special um, but still you have to know how to read well because you can always play the calm moves but the opponents may come for you, may invade your 
Moyo may, or oh, not even Moyo, your, your side territory that looked like cash, uh, he may or she may come for, for a weak group that you thought was fine. Like, you know these types of players that are super aggressive all the time and uh, just cut everything. So you need to always be prepared for that. And of course, sometimes you want to play the strongest move and you want to play a really sharp move and you can actually manage to kill the opponent. So um, judgment is above reading doesn't mean that reading is not important. Reading is actually included in judgment. And that is the thing that Jeff, after all these years, always kept telling me. Judgment is above reading, but it includes reading as well. And uh, you can only judge well if you read well. So it is not super easy to, to um, separate these two. So I have done a lot of talking. There is more to the concept, but I guess it is better if we get to it through the games or through the, through the examples. So I have brought some examples, mostly of my own games. Some of them I also took from NGD games. Mm. So look at this move. <laughs> let's, let's see how this happened. Um, some fancy new Joseki. I played this move, usually white would cut here, I think, but white cut from here, which was quite surprising. And then he played this move. What do you think about this move? I was definitely surprised. I was like, oh, wow, this early in the game, he goes for this type of move. Maybe if I block here, I can kill him and I can get an easy good lead. By the way, can you see the board? I'm not a streamer. I'm not a streamer. So I really appreciate if you tell me something is wrong or something is off. Um, okay, nice. So I tell you, I thought a lot about this. I read quite a while here and this is my first mistake already reading for a lot here because the first thing I should, okay, maybe I can check the first thing I could do is check how complicated is this. And then I would realize relatively quickly that it is kind of, ah, the chat is not scrolling. Okay, let's see. Maybe now it is better. Maybe I have to um, change it. Click on it a lot. Can you see the chat now? Is it moving now? Mm. Yeah, seems like it is better now. So yeah, this extension. So I can see relatively quickly this that this position is kind of complicated, right? But I could also, okay, after I know this, I should maybe think about how about this move? Do I like this outcome? It is simple. And thinking about it a little bit, I can judge relatively quickly that this outcome is already bound to be good for black. Black can Hane, white has to defend and black can get a pincer later. Black can also, as I did in the game, Tenuki it and play somewhere else. So, ah, hi, Alex. Actually, there's one one example from your game, I think, but it has been quite a while since you played that. So, yeah, I spent like five minutes reading this and eventually I decided, okay, judgment is above reading. Why not play this? Make it relatively simple. I know from my judgment, this is good for me, so I should trust it. Maybe I can get a better result like this, but it can also be quite complicated and I can also get a worse result. Actually thinking about this, it can be more or less complicated. It can be some kind of co that I don't want to get into right away. And thinking about it, white might even just die in the corner and just take the stone and the letter, which is kind of a nice influence. So yeah, this type of move, there are many opponents that play these type of fancy moves. And most of the times it is just better to play the simple answer. So this is one example 
where maybe I could have skipped the reading. I could have skipped most of the reading. I can see this is complicated and then just go with a, another idea. Let me show you what happened a little bit later in this game. The second time, I didn't do it right. Look at the mess here at the bottom. Let me show you from the beginning. So my opponent attached here and here, fancy. This opponent likes to play fancy moves. And it's not necessarily bad, actually they're interesting. Um, and I decided that I wanted to go for the strongest because I didn't see a clear way of how he should capture something of me, of mine. So I was thinking a lot about, does it even work for white? And I came to the conclusion, no, white cannot really capture anything of mine. I read quite a lot here and I even cut here. So I went for the strongest. I could have, for example, at this point, maybe played a little bit simple here or also here I could have maybe played like this. It would have come to a result maybe where white captures the stone. This actually looks quite nice for black, but I wanted more. I didn't want to give white an easy life, so I extended here. I really played the strongest possible. No, I didn't play this one. And white found a way to actually make it quite nice for him. So here I even wanted to save the stone and you can see already what is about to happen. This is the result. So what do you think about this result? Are you happy as white? Is it disastrous for black? White def, I mean, black has a lot of cash, but if we think about the beginning, there are these stones one and two. White seems pretty strong. Yeah, that's also the thing. White was actually just invading and now he's super strong. Actually, this type of a group can easily become influence instead of a weak group. I can never really cut because even here, it's not about a letter. I can try to peep, but yeah, it's not a big deal. White is relatively strong. And then also like, these two stones are suspicious now. They don't really do much. So yeah, I think this result is relatively bad for black. It's not disastrous, but let's look at a moment where I could have just thought about judgment is above reading. So how about here? I could just play here. And now look at the marked stone that is completely useless already, like the exchange itself there is quite bad. Is the right side now turning in white's favor enough so it's making up for the for all that happened to the bottom right for black? I think so, yeah, the end result, I remember seeing it on, on a bot that white was slightly better, yeah. And after the beginning, black was a little bit better. So yeah, look at this move. It's relatively simple. White can connect. I can turn, but I mean, white will not die, but the shape of black is super good and I can easily get quite the nice result like this without too much of reading, <laughs> actually. So in this game, it is really a good example of how I could have skipped some reading um, by just judging that it was good enough for me. Now I want to go, come to a small example. This one, this is from an NGD game. And I just wanted to quickly show the next few black moves. Black played this attach and played here. So here the conclusion for this exchange is what is best outcome for me instead of jumping straight to how dare my opponent play here. Yeah, that is also true. I think many, many reading problems happen already by people getting provoked. And uh, yeah, you can just 
answer many crazy moves by just playing calm. But yeah, just these exchanges, look at them. Black managed to block the side. Actually, black left the cut here, but we can also imagine even black just playing here. Black learned about this move and played it. And actually, locally, I think it's the best move you can play because you block white. But then we think about, is it good? And we can relatively clearly see that it is not worth at this moment of the game to take Gote for white taking just another big move. Mm. So, yeah, this is a phenomenon that happens quite a lot. You see a good local move, you want to play it, but then actually, was it even the biggest if you take Gota here? So this was just a quick example where you, where Black could have maybe waited a bit. But okay, let's let's get to some more interesting examples. Here, ah, yeah, this is also from an NGD game. <coughs> I guess you might have seen this Joseki. It's relatively modern. Let's look at it. It happens after the double approach and then cut and white needs to have the letter. And then here there is actually a thing white can do to annoy black, which is to cut here. So, who knows how black is supposed to answer this? What would be your answering move? White just cut. Maybe white can live in the corner. Maybe white can squeeze. D2. All right. D2 is actually the move that was played in the game. And... It is not the move that I would expect black to play. So let's see what actually could happen. Connect at e3 is my first thought here. e3, okay, yeah, also kind of interesting. But maybe white can get the bamboo and maybe it is sente, so you might have to come back. So the idea of this move if white simply connects, black can come back and this tiger shape at e4 is quite nice. If white ex extends, black can play here, but black can maybe even go for this move. So in this variation, white might end up with nothing, but what people are worried about is that white can Atari from below. And then white can actually manage to get a life in the corner. This group cannot be killed. What do you think about this result? I mean, it is definitely nice that white can live in the corner. But let's think about judgment is above reading. Let's think about did it work? Was it good? Pretty good for black, right? It worked, yeah. White lived in the corner, but it was not good. It was especially not yet good. That's the thing. Like, it is later in the game, when things are a little more settled, it can be the biggest to just live in this corner. But even then, I would highly doubt that, for example, playing this exchange is much worse. Like, you sh really shouldn't live in this type of corner too early. And when black played here, black actually gave white the chance to just relatively simply, for example, get this Hane and Sente, or almost Sente, it is big to play it, or this connection Sente, if black plays here. <clears throat> so yeah, this is uh, one good example. Let's see what happened a little bit later in this game. I think when black wants to play d2, he should push d5 first. Yeah, that's also an option, but it doesn't change too much. Like, 
Let's see when it happens. If you exchange it now, white can still get a good shape. Let's see what happened later. <clears throat> white extended here. And black played this one. And look at all the moves that white got. Like this, white got so much. And this is actually, yeah, quite, quite good for white. But so it is also the case that you need to read well to answer this type of move. You cannot simply judge you. This one, you just have to read about what happens if you run about, if you run out this one. And here I can imagine many people might be worried that the future will be super complicated, but actually it is not too, not too difficult to, to see the following. You don't have to read too much. Black is out. Black can even play a move right away in the corner or black can also just maybe play around here. And then if you think about it, this is much nicer for, for black. White made a weak group, black is out. So this move of white was actually just some overplay. All right, let's get to the next example. What is this game? Ah, this is a game I played against Jeff. If you're watching, do you remember? So it is about this moment um, where white has to choose about between what has to choose between a or getting out at B. So let's try to read about A. Black has to defend. <clears throat> and then there is this cut. So black has four liberties. No, white has four liberties, black has three. So here it would come to this squeeze, <clears throat> which looks really quite nice for black. White has, in theory, I mean, even this type of move can be sent it, um, but okay, no, that's a bit far. White cannot really be killed, um, but maybe this move can locally kill white and white has to rely on an eye in the center. So even though white captured the three stones, White is actually not that strong. So this is another example of just reading that you can capture the three stones is not good. Um, and instead what white did was to attach here. And black still has to come back and white didn't go for the cut, but white decided to get out with the group. And this type of fight is still kind of difficult for white because there's also the cut around here. But actually, if you look at it, white can Atari once here, Atari here, and then live. So there was still quite some reading involved in this. It is not like white didn't read. So first you need to have the idea to get out and you need to understand that just simply cutting is really not a good result. So even though it works, it is not good. And like this, white made the game quite more complicated. Yeah. All right. Let's get to another example. I'm getting lost in this. Um, what do we have here? This is what this is. I have a lot of examples from my games against other NGD teachers, actually. Yeah, this is also my game with Jeff. So we're moving to a Jeff section. Um, in this game, <clears throat> I was playing black and white actually misread here a bit. So <clears throat> I got quite a good result here. I need to drink something because otherwise I will lose my voice. <clears throat> All right. 
<clears throat> so black is good. And when you're good, you should even more, I think, rely on judgment. <clears throat> because, because you can afford to play a little bit slack. You don't have to play the strongest possible because even if you don't, you will still be leading. You shouldn't overdo it. But this game is an example of where I overdid it. I relied too much on reading and too much on the variations. So here I wanted to play the strongest possible. I cut and I went for this Ko or this Atari. It is not yet a Ko. And let us look at the following. So white atari played this co-thread over here. I exchanged this white atari again. And I captured and white captured. So white just captured the top stones, which is even just a lot of points. I had like 15 points there. Now white has like 20 eight I don't know almost 30 30 let's say so that's already a shift of like 45 points two panukis yeah that's huge um but it is now black who needs to do something with the influence I went on to attack this and I actually lost this game because I didn't manage to attack this well and I think black at this point is still a little bit better but the game already got way harder for black. And what happened? I I looked at this Ko and Ko is really, as I said earlier, a lot a space for, for judgment, basically. I looked at this Ko and I thought there's no way, way that white will actually play this Ko. My feeling tells me that this shape that I have in the end of the Ko is just so amazing that how can white actually go for this Ko? So I didn't actually even read. I was even lacking reading, but I was lacking judgment even more because I thought white can get whatever and this is just too good. Um, so here I could have just relatively easily played maybe this move and even defend. And probably white is still worse. White has to defend, I can just keep on playing relatively normal, I can maybe attack this stone. Mm. But yeah, I wanted to go for the strongest and this was really quite, quite the mistake. So yeah, and maybe at this point, a little bit off topic, but that's something that I should mention here. Many players, when they face to a ko, Think only about winning the Ko. How can I win the Ko? I want to do everything to win this Ko. Because winning this Ko would give me this shape. And I can understand you. I made the same mistake here in this game. But actually when you face to a Ko, you also need to be realistic and think about how can I lose this Ko and what can I get out of losing this Ko. And this is where judgment gets involved. So... Why? Actually, in this game, it is not even that complicated because there are two threads at the top. Black has no threads and white will capture those. But there are games where it is a bit more abstract, where might, white might end up getting a move here and another move here. And you have to evaluate what does it mean instead of do we really need play to play Ko to win? Yeah, you can also think about do you actually need to play Ko? But I mean... This, this type of judgment is much harder to do. How to tell what white got out of this bottom? Maybe even, okay, in this game, if white loses, if white plays like this, there is no way white can make up for, for what white lost because the other group is also dead in the center. But this is the thing. This, and this is also a chance. If you start thinking more about what can I do to lose the core, you can actually get some good results because the opponents think too much about how to win the core and don't and they will give you anything. I was actually willing to give this back just to win the core. And um, yeah, so remember this. This has a lot to do with judgment and maybe a little bit less with reading, but it is definitely also 
I think, relevant for the topic today. Okay, let's move to another example. This is a game I played against another NGD teacher, which is Elian, my good friend. And we have this position. So I already showed the move. What do you think on this board? What would you play? What's the biggest? Is it, I will give you some options. A, I will give you, I will give you the cut at B. I will give you, I guess you saw the move already. I will give you C. So trying to live there. And maybe I will give you C, ah, D. A, B, C, D. Those are the options. If you don't like them, you can try to play another move. I mean, I just thought of these moves. Doesn't mean they're the best. A, it's taking a lot of influence, it's enhancing the bottom left. I wonder, are you not sure about what you want to play? Or is something wrong with the stream? <laughs> this is something that worries me. B, somebody says B. Yeah, this is a cut. Let's look at B. <clears throat> it is definitely... So, here we can also think about judgment is above reading. First, you need to read, of course, what will happen in the future here. And you need to, for example, know if you add another move here, if there is any trouble around here. This is something you have to read before you cut. And you can dig into some variations here. It will be relatively complicated already. So you already need to do quite some reading to look at this cut. Then you can also say, I just cut, then maybe I do one exchange here and defend. That is also something you could do, but then it's the question, was it worth it to cut? Mm, what my opponent did, well, what I would do as white, I would play A because I think the bottom right corner is there is still RG and I think this is just the biggest move. Both players can enhance their Moyo there. So I would be playing around here. But my opponent wanted to do something right away. And I decided to actually play the most aggressive move possible, which is to connect here. If I would have just played this move, then white can easily decide. Ah, hi, Nicola. White can easily decide to capture the stone, but white doesn't have to do it right away. White can just play here first and white already has half a living in the corner, which is actually quite huge. I was thinking about to do this, but then I thought, okay, let me try to read a bit more and also judge how this will turn out. And I realized that white can maybe run out with the group, but it will be extremely dangerous. And actually I can get something out of it. So let's see about the following. White decides to run this right away. And now white attaches here. Why does white attach here? If white connects this, my plan is to peep. And then the next move is a little bit challenging, but let's say, Maybe this one, the shape is a bit odd, but it is actually quite hard for white to live here. The corner is locally dead and white has to make an eye on the outside, but it's actually quite hard. So that is why he attached here first. And if I just take this now, this honey is quite good for white. So I decided to answer first 
and it came like this Atari and now I even took the stones so eventually I got the corner most of it and white has this relatively weak group that he has to run out with and it turned out like this in the meanwhile I also enhanced the right side so actually this result is quite disastrous for white in my opinion and actually you won't believe it after this I was already leading by like 10 points on Lila which is really rare in this type of an opening after I mean white just made one wrong decision which was to run out with this stone with these stones but this is what I mean if you think too much about the incentive you want to get like living with the corner invading a group you can easily get a really bad opening if you are too too tight with it so white is really just weak and heavy and black got a lot out of this attack so yeah what white could also have decided to leave it at this point and then to tenuki making some exchange but then actually if i play another move it is kind of a question of what white got these exchanges might have been hurtful I will get to another example this is just a game all right we're at this moment okay I played here what do you think who do you like do you like black black has cash of course White has the Moyo or is it already cash? How would you evaluate this Moyo? Is it invadable? Can you simply reduce? Can you... I don't know. You could also just wait another move. You could extend here. It is a big move locally. What would you do here? There are actually many options. You could also just play around here or I mean white I like more your play okay it is nice that you say this but I hope that you wouldn't say this to any board that has white with the moyo because you need to be realistic even though you like moyo there are also just positions that are bad for you even though you have a moyo but here I will accept it <laughs> I was playing black actually just for your information but um, yeah here I was thinking well it's just a relatively normal game white has this moyo but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a big problem this moyo too big and empty I like white I mean if the moyo is too big and empty then we can just invade it right so let me show you my move it was this this and triple honey i basically went for an invasion but at this mo moment what would you play so i give you two options one is to just decide, okay, I will just go for the reduction. You can get it like this, Atari, and then play here. Reducing the Moyo to basically this line. Incentive. Or you can connect. Leaving a double Atari behind. So this letter doesn't work. But you can try to think about a letter breaker, maybe this move. Maybe you can also Atari wants and peep here or something. There are quite some options. You can also attach here. So when you're invading, you can basically be flexible and creative. But with this connection already, you make quite some investments because if you don't get anything out of this, you lose quite something. So here we need to judge first. 
we can read a bit first as well. We can, <laughs> we can think about if we find anything clearly here. If we don't, we can also first think about, okay, is this enough for me? Do I like it? Do we like this reduction? So let me tell you what I did in the game. I played exactly like this and the following turned out like this. My opponent played here and I show until this point, I think I played some move around here now. But actually, this was the biggest mistake of this game. After these exchanges, white is plus seven points. And before it, actually, black was plus two. So in this single sequence, I lost like eight points. And why was that? Because I completely misjudged the position and because I wanted to skip the reading. So don't do that, basically. We shouldn't skip the reading just because we think our judgment is enough. My judgment was wrong first of all, but then also maybe I was a bit uncreative or lazy to read about the following. I didn't see any clear picture if it comes to this or I thought maybe I'm paying too much in the center with those exchanges, but actually it turns out that this is exactly what I should have done to play around here. And then it is actually quite hard for white. Actually like this, it makes the game also harder for white. So yeah, this is the example of you cannot skip the reading. And I mean, maybe you can always skip the reading if you always judge right. But in this situation, there was no judgment involved. Like I should have just gone for this because or the judgment should have been that this is really not enough. Um, so yeah, I, I really needed to go for the complication. You cannot always avoid the complication. This is what I said in the beginning. Um, you can be good at judging, but when it comes to this type of position, you need to be able to, to fight as well because always going for the easy move is not enough. Okay. I will get to another example. Yeah, this is an example that is interesting because it involves an complicated joseki. So actually, let me show you the beginning of this joseki. It comes to this. I was what? I was white. And I played this. Nowadays, I saw that the AI plays like this. This is a joseki that you should remember because it means we used to say that this is not enough or not too great for white, but actually the AI says it is fine for white. And that's why many people played. I, I also studied about this joseki and I studied a lot about the following variations if my opponent plays this move. So you can study a lot about this, but eventually knowing that this is just fine is actually also nice. It is judgment is above reading because if you know that this is a good position, you don't even need to judge yourself. You just trust in it and you don't need to do all this reading that is involved in the following. And actually my opponent didn't play here, but he played another push. And then this jump, which is also a move. And I somehow made a decision of blocking here, even though I don't know if this move exists. So maybe you can relate to this. Um, this is very untypical for me. I don't like to play Josekis that I don't know. And then especially I don't like to go for variations in them that I don't know. So here I could have easily just played a move around here. And I know that this type of move exists and I need to just accept that black will maybe capture the center two stones, but I get sente, I get another move. So it is nothing too bad, but I decided to go for reading. So let's alert about this word reading already. 
And I even misread because I read a lot about like what happens here. And then I read about the cut. So it can come to this. So black cannot block. But then black just simply made one more exchange. And I cannot ignore this. If I ignore this, it will come to this type of a position where I am actually locally just dead. So there's not much reading involved here. White could just play like this, then push once again, and white is captured. Um, yeah, and I still went for this, but now comes the time where I need to accept it and I need to do some judging. So, and my opponent didn't do enough of it. So my opponent was really happy that he captured these stones. I played here, connecting, which is huge. And my opponent didn't play here, but pushed again. Because if my opponent Tenukis, there is still some Aji that I can unfold in the following. Maybe it can come to some Seki maybe, actually not really yet. So maybe my opponent could have even Tenukid, but he decided to make it safe. And I doubled Han it and got all these moves. So my opponent is thinking a lot about how he can efficiently capture my stones, but he's not thinking enough about what he's giving me. Look at all the left side. Look at this stone. White is getting so much influence and black didn't enhance his territory anymore. And actually there's still a lot of Aji. Like if black doesn't play, there's a cut that I can play. I can, I can get some moves. I mean, it's not like I will save them, but there's really quite some RG left behind. And I got this extension. So already my opponent read too much. He read a lot. Instead of, for example, let's go back to this moment where he could have just done it solidly with one move. And then later he can still invade here. So these exchanges, he already paid something. And then in the following, he even read more and cut here. So let's think about this cut. What is black trying to do? Black is trying to black break white, but eventually black is not really achieving much. White is still having the whole left side and is creating a weak group. So in this following variation here, I was thinking about, can I capture? There's a nice Tsuji here, which is this double Atari. I was also considering maybe playing a move like this and then trying to go for the complete capture. But then I realized, okay, let's not too, do too much reading because if I lose this type of a fight, I'm not sure what I'm getting. So I eventually settled for this. But here there is a problem. Black can cut. And then run out here. It is Atari. I cannot, I mean, I could also capture here, but then black is even more out. If black runs right away, actually, let's read this letter together. It is just a letter, but black got out. But look at this result. White is super strong. Black captured two stones, but white got the whole left side that I will mark here. And black even got, I mean, black has to answer first. And white even got to easily have a super strong shape at the top and white got sent it. So, White can just play the next move at the bottom 
and invade here. And just in the turn of all these moves, I completely turned the game around. Because I kept my calm, I thought about, okay, I lost these stones, but the game is actually not that bad. I can just keep playing. And then my opponent went too, too hard at the variations, like wanted to cut at the top and that was really bad. So very soon I turned the game around because my opponent was focusing too much on reading. I don't have many examples left, I think. Let's see. This is one. Yeah, this example is uh, from a game I have just played in the European Championship. Like, actually, not just. It is, it is some weeks ago. <laughs> it is a month ago or so. And it comes to this really early fight that is... I'm black here. I'm playing black. And I'm not proud of this fight because I was way too aggressive. So we can also look at the beginning actually here. My opponent played here and I went for the cut right away. What other option does black have? Do you have some ideas of how black can handle this group as well? Or this position? How would you play? There are no wrong answers, just throw some ideas. E3, wow. I wonder if somebody is using an AI because this is exactly the move that the AI suggests. <laughs> and this is the perfect move. It is just a nice move. I mean, uh, black can get some exchanges, white can play like this. But there is this peep left, so it is some Aji for the future. And black can just settle, for example, by pushing up here or just simply playing a move around here. White might be able to surround, but black can just live. And actually the problems are to white. White has the cut left, white has this stone to worry about and the peep. And if black is just alive, there is not much of a problem. In the game, I didn't like to be surrounded. I didn't want to be surrounded, but actually it is just a feeling. Why do I not want to be surrounded? Just thinking about it and just judging, you can come to the conclusion being surrounded is no problem if I'm just alive and white has some problems in the future. I could have thought I was thinking about just playing this move. I didn't see the AI move. And I thought it can come to something like this, maybe. But even this is not too bad. The shape is a bit better for white. Um, maybe I shouldn't play here. Maybe I should just play here. White cannot easily kill or attack this. So this would have just been good enough if I just judged. But I wanted to go for the fight. So what I did was to cut here right away. And, it, and in the, even in this position, I decided again to Atari, connect and play this kind of ugly shape to play the maximum attack. Looking at this game now, a month later, I really wonder why was I so aggressive? Like here I could have, for example, just atari from below, played a Kema. Or other than that, I could have came out and jumped. So my group is settling. I can still play here at some point. So really I was playing a little bit too aggressive. I wanted to kill something. And then actually there was some problem here but we will go talk about this position so here white saw that there is some problem in my area and started to do something right away there are quite some problems here there's this move maybe white can get a connection like this black has a lot of shape issues 
But then there are also the other black stones around here at one. And then there is the group at two. So let's see what white did. White did a lot of reading. Here, here, I connected and then white cut. So already at this moment, I was down quite a lot on time because I was the one who had to read about this capturing race. What happens if, for example, white cuts and I play here. This is really quite a, quite a complicated liberty race. And I had to do this reading, but eventually it came like this. I got to play some clamp here. This is quite complicated already. It came to some co, but I want to show you this position. So I managed to capture the two stones and white made all those bad exchanges and leaving this dumpling. Having to play here and now it is black to play. Black can decide to run out with those stones or black can decide to maybe defend because there is still some potential cut here. Um, around here there is a cut which is quite nice for white. So I want to go back to this position and I want to just show that white should have just played calm. If white played here right away, black had to worry about the all those weaknesses around here. And if I would have played against this white, I would probably eventually have played some defending move. But it's not even easy to find one move. Like I could play here, but then there are still weaknesses around here. If I play this ugly move, then there can maybe be an extension just and white can connect those stones. So this is really just a simple move that doesn't include a lot of reading. And if I would have defended, now white gets the first move around the center, which is really powerful. So by doing all these exchanges, white didn't have anything completely clear because it is super hard to already read out everything here. And if white would have just captured and lose these stones, then there is also something that you should judge, but this is quite good for black. Black gets really, black has no problem, problems like white got the corner, but essentially black really has a lot of strength. These cutting stones are kind of useless. Black has a lot of influence. So this was not really an option for white. White had to save these stones and it comes to this compl really complicated fight and even this call nobody could read it out in the beginning and then he eventually decided okay i will give this and i will accept this result but i just wanted to show you that this was really quite much worse than just playing the simple move at around at around here So yeah, I'm already at the limit of my examples. Um, what do you think? Do you have some, some questions about the general topic judgment is above reading? So maybe let's, let's conclude. So what I want to mainly say is that in almost every position or in every fight, there is not only reading but there's also judgment. So, and we need to do both. We need to judge and we need to read. We can first read, but if we already know beforehand that what we can achieve is not worth it, then we can spend a lot of time reading, but it's not worth it. So maybe in the beginning, it is even good to think about, is this worth reading? 
And if it is, then we should go for it. It is important. We need to be able to find the strongest moves. But as in the first example I showed, you can save a lot of time by just simply judging and knowing, okay, if I just answer here, it is good enough. I don't need to read about this fight too much because I can not get much more and it is actually too complicated to get a clear answer. Um, this is a, a, an advice that I think can easily rank you up a stone if you're at a certain level. Um, but yeah, don't expect too much of it because as we saw in some other examples, you cannot skip the reading. So you always need to be able to fight as well if it, if it happens. But in every fight, there is also judgment involved. You can always think about there will be a game after this fight. This fight will not necessarily decide the game. So it can always be that after a fight you think about, huh, why did I play this weird shape? Just because I was reading some variation, you know. Um, so yeah, essentially the important thing to remember is judgment is above reading, but it includes reading as well. Or judgment is also, or reading is also part of the judgment. You need to know what you're judging. You cannot just say, I always play the simple moves for my opponents and for me, and then I know what to judge, you know. Somebody said, look at the opening. Well, there's a, certainly a lot of judgment in the opening. What I'm trying to tell you is that you shouldn't read too much in the opening many times. Um, because I really hate to lose a game because I made a, a complicated mistake in, in some really complicated just seki in the opening. Uh, I like to keep the variations relatively short. Um, yeah, so just like here, relatively short variation and it is just good enough for me. Um, yeah, but I guess um, it is not really easy to come up with some more examples on the fly, so I will not try. Ah, you want to look at the opening of the last game? Yeah, we can look at it a little bit. But that's not... Well, actually... Let's just look at it a little bit. Ah, this is actually a scribe's mistake. Wow. <laughs> I played this pincer. But okay. Yeah, this exchange is interesting. I already read a lot here. So I read about the following here. Do I have to defend? And I spent quite a lot of time thinking about if I should play here or here. White could have cut here and maybe it can come to some variation like this. And I'm not sure about the following. I spent a lot of time reading. So maybe I shouldn't have spent all this time. <laughs> because eventually, essentially my opponent just jumped and didn't think much about it. And relatively soon we already get to the position that I talked about. So this is an example of where it comes to fighting really early. And when you do that, you really need some good reason to do that. Because as I said, I could have just played simple and it would have been good, good enough. Mm. But all right, I think that is it for the for this lecture. I, I think it is better to end it like this. I, I talked a lot. There were a lot of things to think about. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone for, for being here, for asking questions. Um, sorry about the problem with the internet connection on Saturday. Even though not everybody can watch the stream now, we will of course upload it on YouTube and you can look at it later. And yeah, make sure to judge more and read less. No, that's not what I want to send you home with. 
um, make sure to think also about judgment and not only about reading. Let's leave it. Let's leave it at that. And um, yeah, how to end the stream again? I go to OBS and I say goodbye, everybody.